Good morning, everyone, uh, and welcome to our third talk in the series of our Holistic Living series for Land of Shambhala. Uh, today, we are uh, talking with uh, Jose Garcia, uh, astrologer for um, almost 40 years uh, in uh, expert in uh, Western Vedic and Kala Chakra astrology. So just as a, a reminder, an intro of um, our project, uh, Zogton has purchased 40 acres of, of land uh, in Victoria, Australia, um, to build a spiritual paradise for people to experience the life-changing qualities of the Kala Chakra path. Um, so it will give um, sentient beings an opportunity to find harmony within their external environment, internal and enlightened reality. And as part of Kentra Rinpoche's vision, uh, we'll bring together the teachings of Kala Chakra um, and the sciences and the various wisdom traditions in the one place. So uh, as part of this series, we're talking to experts in their fields uh, of um, Buddhism, the six yogas, uh, Western psychology, astrology, Ayurveda, uh, Tibetan and Chinese medicine, uh, herbs and Feng Shui and Sache, just to name a few. So to introduce today's uh, speaker, uh, we have Jose Garcia, um, who uh, is born and raised in Puerto Rico and has studied in Western astrology uh, after focusing and studying a career in psychology. Uh, his first teacher in astrology was uh, Dr. Armando Fonte de la Dara, I hope I've said that okay, <laughs> who studied for 18 years with the famous British astrologer, Alan Leo. Uh, who was considered uh, in his times the father of modern astrology. Uh, Leo was first to merge with both Vedic and Western astrology principles and techniques into one comprehensive method. Uh, after his first meeting with Dr. Della Jara, uh, Jose continued his studies for 11 years. Uh, and as a result of this love for astrology, uh, he created his first formal school of astrology in Puerto Rico. Uh, his interest in the Kala Chakra path uh, began in 1982, um, but it wasn't until he received uh, in the, his first empowerment from His Holiness uh, in 1987 uh, that he understood uh, the import, how important uh, knowing Vedic astrology was to grasp before uh, attempting the Kala Chakra, uh, to grasp the depth of the Kala Chakra teachings. Uh, Jose's personal research was significantly transformed when he met his Jyotish guru, Dr. Krishna Bhatt, who holds a PhD in physics and astrophysics and is well versed in traditional astronomy and astrology. Um, Jose received further color chakra empowerments in 91 and 95 from His Holiness, um, which rekindled these interests and further research. And from 1987 to present day, Jose has been instrumental in establishing three Tibetan Buddhist centers in San Juan in Puerto Rico, uh, the Guru Padmasambhava Buddhist Center, uh, the Ganden Sherav Ling, and of course, the Zogtin uh, group in Puerto Rico, uh, led by our teacher, Kentra Rinpoche. Uh, in addition to his work within the field of Tibetan Buddhism, Jose is co-founded with Dr. Krishna Bhatt, uh, the International Research Institute of Vedic Sciences uh, with the goal of offering his master and PhD degrees in Vedic astrology, yoga therapy and Ayurveda. Uh, Jose resides in San, uh, San Juan in Puerto Rico, uh, where he maintains and practices both as a professional uh, Vedic astrologer and teacher. So uh, this morning we welcome uh, Jose Garcia. Welcome, so Jose. How are you? Thank you, thank you. I'm so honored, as I wrote minutes ago, uh, for this opportunity, and not only that, to, to have this meeting and to share with all of you at this moment. I know, I know that uh, this is going to be a life-changing experience for me, uh, mm -hmm. because, because I, you know, I only want to share uh, what has been my experience for, you know, during all these years. And of course, I know that because of the different time zones, uh, people will be probably uh, see this uh, this transmission later on. Yeah. But I'm I'm so glad I'm so glad that I'm here and honored and and I greet everybody 
no matter where they are at this moment. Thank you, Jose. And uh, also, we are we are honoured to have you here and um, being part of this discussion and this project. Um, so, firstly, uh, I guess it would be um, I'd like to start with. Um, you know, your thoughts on the importance of astrology and the spiritual path. So can you talk a little bit about that? Okay. Uh, first, it's interesting to know uh, that in all the spiritual traditions in the world, astrology has been a main factor. For example, that happened with Taoism, Chinese Taoism. That happened in the Tibetan tradition. That happened in the Vedic tradition. It happened as well for example, in Islamic tradition, in Kabbalistic tradition, even in here in, in the West, in the Americas, we know that there is a Mayan astrology. So all, all, major, all major streams of the spiritual path have uh, some kind of astrology practice. And why? Why? First, because is it, astrology is important to first to calculate the religious festivities and celebrations. And we're gonna talk further, you know, and uh, in a minute about the importance of the moon cycles, for example, in this. But they all, for example, they knew that astrology and astrology, astrological calculations was very important in order to settle and to establish the correct time for festivities. Why? Because certain energies that come from the moon and specifically the solar and moon angles create certain states of mind that create better, better, not only understanding, but will help to enter into better states of mind during a specific religious festivities. But for example, in the case of Vedic astrology that have that is part of the Kala Chakra astrology, we can we can go deeper into the person's karma. Okay, because mm -hmm. it's important for a, a person that enters into the spiritual path to know what is what is the baggage, what is what he brought to this lifetime in order to work it out. So, mm -hmm. so as more as the more that we know about ourselves and our, our karma, about the spirit, the experiences that we are going to have or we are going to experience in this lifetime, the better equipped we are to work with, with to work ourselves in the spiritual path but at the same time it's important because uh, all the masters know that uh, everybody have their own tendencies their own capabilities and their own karmic uh, tendencies and proclivities so they can use that even to establish the correct practice for every student. So that is the pertinence, that is the importance of astrology in the spiritual path. So is the guide, is the guide to the spiritual path, but at the same time is the best tool to, to work within, as we will see when we touch the point, when we bring the point of the inner Kala Chakra, that is so important because it's connected with, with astrology, and the, uh, as, as I said, the faces and the angles of them. Okay, so for people that are not familiar with uh, astrology and how they connect the universe with themselves, how does, how does astrology pinpoint that for a particular person? Well, I think it's important, uh, Tanya, to explain a very important point that, in, that you can find in different... For example, books when they when they write about Kala Chakra astrology or when they write about astrology per se. So, in order to understand how those stellar influence or those planetary influence work on us, it's important to establish the difference between three kinds of zodiacs. Okay, mm -hmm. between three kinds of zodiacs. First. We have what we call the sidereal zodiac. Of course, we know that we call the zodiac a path in which we see the sun traverse or move around the year. Of, no, of course, we know 
that the sun doesn't move. We are, we are watching from our earthly perspective. But that path of the sun across 12 different constellations is what we call the zodiac. And of course, in, in Vedic astrology, we call it the Pachakra. So zodiac is a Greek word to mean the path of the animals, okay? Now, the thing is that uh, that, that path was, was uh, considered by the ancient uh, the uh, most important uh, field of energy that influenced our Earth, because we know that there are hundreds of other stars, group of stars and constellations, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So why those 12 specific constellations were chosen by the ancient? Not only because that is the way, that is the path of the sun, uh, uh, during the year, but at the same time, this the, the, the path of all other planets during during the year as well. Now, but we also talk about tropical zodiac. For example, uh, whenever I go and I teach astrology, Tanya, people mm -hmm. ask me why our uh, our signs, sun sign, have changed. Because as you know, as a student of Vedic astrology, that whenever you calculate the uh, the sun the solar position of any person usually moves backward okay because and that is because of the precession of the equinoxes we all mm -hmm. know that the earth is tilted 23 degrees and a half that tilt of the earth had been creating a lack of coordination between the season and the position of the sun and we are about 23 days behind uh, 23 degrees behind now mm -hmm. The thing is that we talk about the tropical zodiac and a lot of people are, are more, they identify more with the, uh, that tropical uh, zodiac than the sidereal zodiac. So when you said that a person had changed sign from Aries to Pisces, uh, many of them say, I, but I, I don't feel like, like a Piscean, I feel like an Aryan. okay? Now, why? Now, what is that tropical zodiac? And this is important to understand because the Kali Chakra astrology is based on the tropical zodiac, not the sidereal zodiac. Now, mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the stainless light, that is the, uh, that is the brief version of the, uh, of the Sri Kali Chakra Tantra larger version that was done by Pundarika, by King Pundarika. He's, he talks about what is called the uh, Hiranya Garbha. Mm -hmm. That is a Sanskrit word that means the golden womb. The golden womb. In, in, in the earth, the same as in the physical body, we have the physical structure of the earth that is similar and correspond to our physical body. Mm -hmm. But in the same way that we have a subtle body, that we have a subtle body, the earth also have a subtle body. And the, in the same way that we have a causal body, the earth have a causal body, or we are related to a causal body. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that subtle body of the earth is created, is formed by the magnetic field of the earth. The ancient divided that field or Hiranya Garbha in 12 equal parts, mm -hmm. each part with the same name of a constellation, but the signs are not the constellations. So whenever you say that you are an Aries or you're a Taurian or you're a Gemini or you're, or you were born in Gemini, what you mean is that you were influenced during a certain moment during the year by that energy, that energy field that we call the, the golden womb. That is the earth aura. Let's say the earth aura, okay? So, so even though the zodiacal signs have the name of the constellations, they are not the constellations. Now, how are we influenced by those? How are we influenced by those 
sectors of this womb. In the Kala Chakra tradition, if we study the Kala Chakra mandala, we see that in the Earth mandala, when we study the lunar month, we see kind of lotuses with 30 petals, each of them have a goddess inside, which means that that kind of energy is produced by some kind of beings or intelligence that influence us. And that was a belief held by the Egyptians as well and held by the Sabians as well. So we believe that we are influenced by certain intelligence beings or hierarchies that live in the spiritual atmosphere of our earth. And if we compare the mandala, the Kala Chakra mandala to our earth, we will see that in each story of the mandala, there's a host of gods and bodhisattvas, etc. So those are the beings that influence human beings in their physical plane as well and in other planes of consciousness. So the, uh, the outer layer, you know, the uh, external thing, the external zodiac, that is the sidereal zodiac, are also connected with gods. That is the reason why when you study astrology, Vedic astrology, you, you come to know that every group of stars that we call in Sanskrit nakshatras, everyone have its own God, for example. The first one, Ashwini, I mean, uh, Ashwini have, are, is ruled and influenced, but what we call the Ashwini Kumaras, the doctors of God, the second one by Yama, et cetera, et cetera. So in other words, this system of astrology, if the Kala Chakra astrology, the Vedic astrology, et cetera, you know, we are not focused into the electromagnetic thing. You know, I remember Tanya, when I, when I started studying astrology many years ago, I was so obsessed by trying to prove <clears throat> about the uh, electromagnetic influence and what is the, how do the planets influence the people on earth? <clears throat> no, even in the, in the first chapter of the Brihad Parashara Hora Shastra, it says that 10 planets are manifestation of Vishnu. So we are talking about divine forces and energy that not only are, as Rinpoche have taught us many times, not only outside our body, but inside our body as well. So this is important because we need to break down, we as students of the Kala Chakra tradition, we need to break with this materialistic tendency to believe that we are only dealing with forces in the universe. No, we're dealing with intelligences in the universe. So that is the way in which we're influenced. And because we have the same, the same type of energies and intelligence inside of us, that is the reason why they correlate each other and how the inner and the outer are correlate and influenced mutually. Perfect, thank you. So, um, you know, the color chakra is also, um, referenced in, in Vedic astrology um, before and after the time of the Buddha as well, right? Can you talk a little bit about um, that and its influence? There's, there's one theory, uh, Tanya, that can be highly polemic in the Kala Chakra tradition and with, uh, you know, within the, uh, the Kala Chakra scholars that says that Kala Chakra started with the uh, preaching of the Kala Chakra uh, from Buddha Chakyamuni on. But there are other theories that says the Kala Chakra was something that existed in there before that, because all the teachings came from Shambhala as well, came from mm -hmm. Shambhala now. But it's interesting that Parashara Muni, that was the one that gave to this, to this world uh, the teachings of the Vedic astrology in the Param Param sequence of uh, you know, uh, masters and disciples, Parashara that exists that lived 17,000 years ago. He wrote about Kala Chakra Dasha system, the system of predictions that he called the Kala Chakra uh, prediction system. Now, this is very important because 
uh, in one in one of the uh, of Rinpoche's talks, and in the explanation that Rinpoche uh, do in the third volume of his of a trilogy, when he speaks about the Kala Chakra Mandala, he speaks about how you know, for example, the elements you know jump from one side to the other side, mimicking the way that the energies are manifested in our body. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the Kali Chakra system of Parashara that was given seven, seven, uh, uh, 17,000 years ago, he talks about Sabya and Apasabya signs, signs that move forward and backward, okay? And this is very interesting because that matched perfectly with the systems of what, that we study when we study the, the Kala Chakra Mandala. Now, but at the same time, the, the disc that Lord Vishnu hold in his finger, okay? So whoever have seen the image of Lord Vishnu with the disc in his hand, this, that disc is called the Sudarchana Chakra, but is also called the Kala Chakra system or the Kala Chakra wheel or the wheel of time. Now, Parashara in his book, in his, is his opus magnum, in the Brihad Parashara Horashastra, also gave a system of prediction based on the Sudarchana Chakra, in which he made three wheels, one that corresponds to the ascendant, the other one that corresponds to the sun, and the other one that corresponds to the moon. So, and then, you can use that system also as a system of prediction. But after, in the sixth uh, century of, the, of, the, of this common era, another, another master uh, whose name was Harihara, he also explained another system of Kala Chakra uh, uh, astrology based on the Shaktis on the heart lotus. You know that in the center of the Kala Chakra uh, mandala, you have, apart from the uh, Kala Chakra Jabjum, you know, you have Kala Chakra and Vishwamata, then you have mm -hmm. eight petals in which they are the eight Shaktis. But precisely, the Kala Chakra system taught by Harihara is based on the movement of the energy in these petals that activates those Shaktis that are in the Kala Chakra Mandala. So it's interesting that those are techniques, those are techniques, Tanya, that were prior and after the preaching of the Buddha. Now, there's another system that is based on the Big Deeper. So the Big Deeper rotates this in the same, in the same way. So the Big Deeper is also called the Kala Chakra. So it's also is, is, uh, used in Vedic astrology to study larger cycles of time that influence the earth. So it's important for, for the people that are following this transmission to know that there's a lot of information that is so, this is so intricate, you know, that uh, requires, that requires, uh, you know, uh, uh, to go deeper into, into what, uh, into the tradition of the Kala Chakra, but at the same time, you know, the, uh, the, the other sources that can give more light on the system. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, and if we bring it sort of down to, a, um, you know, if we look at the timing, uh, well, the importance of timing of color chakra astrology and what that means to, um, you know, practice and for people practicing the color chakra path, can you talk a little bit about that? Well, I, I talk about in the, uh, in the beginning about, about the inner zodiac. Okay. So we had three zodiacs, the ex external sidereal. Mm -hmm. the tropical zodiac, but we have an internal zodiac. Now, in, in the chapter of the individual, in the Kala Chakra, in the, in the Kala Chakra tradition, we know that all the, all, everything that is in an almanac, for example, you know that in, in, in the Vedic tradition, we use an, a system that is called Panchanga. Panchanga is a five limb system a five limb system that we use to calculate the best moment to do certain things. That is called Muhurta. Muhurta mm -hmm. is what in the West is called electionary astrology. 
but also we use it uh, to, to learn about how the different elements are moving in our body. Now, the thing is this, in the, in the chapter of the individual, in the college chapter teachings, it is said that we have an inner zodiac. And that inner zodiac first is manifest in what we call the, the, uh, the lotus of manifestation. That is the one that reside in, our, in the center of our body, okay? In the center of our body. So that, that lotus of manifestation that we have in our, you know, behind our belly button, in our solar plexus, then that is the first manifestation of the zodiac. Now, but at the same time, the 12 signs of the zodiacs runs through our channels in the same way that we have a solar channel, that is uh, a solar channel, all the, all the, the, the male or positive signs runs through those channels. So we have, what are those? Those are Aries and Gemini. This is the case of Leo. This is the case of Libra, et cetera, et cetera. So all fiery and airy signs run through the solar channel. But in, this, in the same way, the, 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 uh, in the lunar channel, all the, all the feminine uh, uh, signs that are earthly signs and watery signs, they move and they, and they flow. So we have two zodiacs inside. One in the lotus of manifestation in the solar plexus, the other one in our channels. Now, the other thing is that it is said in the chapter of the individual that in the, in the petals of the lotus, we have also the panchanga. So when we talk about Dina, Dina is the, the day of the week. That day of the week is manifest in some of the petals, some of the lotus. When we talk about, for example, the nakshatras, they are inside of our body as well, in some of the petals, in some of the, uh, in some of the lotuses. In the same way happened with the half, uh, uh, the half moon day. The same happened with the moon uh, day. The same happened with the adding of the sun longitude with the moon longitude. So all this panchanga that is called, it, uh, just to explain the concept, uh, the first is Dina. Dina is the weekday, is inside of our body. Nakshatra, that are the constellations, are inside of our body, in the petals of the chakra. In the same way, uh, the half a lunar day is inside of us. The lunar day is inside of us. And the adding of the longitude of the sun and the moon that we call yoga or nitya is inside of us. So mm -hmm. when the practitioner knows that, then he control his own astrology. He can control his own astrology. But at the same time, Tanya, there's another thing. In that same chapter, but also in the, in the Vimala Prabha, in the, uh, in the stainless light, there's a relationship between nakshatras, constellations, and letters of the alphabet, and planets and letters of the alphabet. Mm -hmm. And that is also important because that those letters of the alphabet can also be used in the practice. When we study the, the Kala Chakra Mandala, we see that all the deities have also have also uh, their own their own syllables, their own bijans in, uh, uh, that can be used to activate those forces inside of us. But also, when we go into the six yoga practices, we can use this same knowledge. Uh, because that will give us the patterns of the movements of the wind inside of our channel. In the past uh, lecture given by, by Rinpoche and the Tulku, then he emphasized in the 72,000 channels and he emphasized how the uh, energy moves and he made the symbol like, like those, those energies like, like rivers, the channels like, like rivers, et cetera, et cetera. So the same thing happened, but that are controlled by the moon. Okay, so when we know the, how the moon move, okay, how are the phases of the moon, the solely lunar angle, then we can know in which way 
our energies moving. Even in the uh, in the uh, in the Bimala Prabha, but as, as well in the chapter of the individual, uh, they talk about you know how the energy should be flowing in each of the channel according to the phases of the moon and according to the different tipis or lunar days. That is another concept that is important because that is a, is a way that is can give us a way to do pronostications or that we can know what can happen just because, <clears throat> just based on the, of the movement of the energy inside of our body. Mm -hmm. So this is the importance of that, this internal, uh, internal, uh, in the internal college chakra, to know that if we have the zodiac inside, if we have everything inside, then through the control of our energy, through the control of our, our mind, and through the practice of the, uh, of the, for example, generation state in a stage in which we visualize ourselves at the Kali Chakra deity in a, by, and by practice, you know, in, a, in, a, in advanced stages, the six yoga, we can break our zodiac and we can be free from the, from the uh, rounds of samsara, from the wheel of samsara. There's another important thing, the 12 nidanas, so brilliantly described by Trin Poche in the first book, you know, those, every of those Nidanas have an arc related with each zodiacal sign. Thank you. And uh, if we sort of bring it to down to something like, if you could explain, say the moon cycles and what that means in terms of practice uh, for, um, you know, if we, if, if we just choose one thing, um, you know, the, the focus of the um, moon cycles um, as a color chakra practitioner, how can that, what can we do with that? How can that assist us with our practice? Well, first of all, we need to, we need to understand why the moon is important. The moon is important, Tanya, because the moon controls the supper body. Okay, so if we understand that principle, then we know that the, uh, the relation between the sun and the moon give the key to where the, the energy is replaced. For example, when the moon is waxing, okay, all the energies are growing inside of us. But at the same time, the energy is growing in nature. Okay, so when the moon is waning, everything also is decreasing. So the waxing, uh, the waxing phase of the moon, the waste, the, what we call the, uh, the fortnight, the clear or the bright fortnight is related to the solar channel. But the, uh, the waning, the waning or the, uh, the dark, the dark fortnight of the moon then is related with the uh, lunar, with the uh, lunar channel. Now, it's important, it's important to know that in the practice, whenever you are practicing some kind of deity that are deities of compassion, it's better when you do the practice when your lunar channel is active, not the solar channel. For example, when you're practicing uh, what we call wrathful deities, then the solar channel is important. For example, that's in Kala Chakra, that's the case of Pachra Vega, mm -hmm. because the solar energies give, give us the, the power to overcome any kind of obstacles, okay? So this is one, of, one way in which we can, in which we can use the, the cycles of the moon, you know, the, uh, the, the lunar month per se. <clears throat> but at the same time, the different, the, every, every time that the moon moves 12 degrees apart or away from the sun, it creates a particular kind of energy. Okay, so for example, in the first day of the moon, uh, when, uh, when the sun, when the moon moves 12 degrees from the sun, then that day is ruled by the sun. So we know that there's the solar energy that is, uh, that is working inside of us. So the, uh, the 30 tipis of the moon 
the 30 titis or the days of the moon, each, each one of, of those titis have a particular energy that activates it inside of us. Now, there's another thing. Many people don't know, Tania, why many of the uh, Buddhist uh, icons, for example, deities, are represented by Jews that have 16 years of age. And that is because, for example, that is the case of the Taras. That is the case of the Taras. Taras are represented at John, like, like, uh, like girls that have about 16 years of age. Why? Because that is the key connected with the cycles of the moon. Because uh, in the 16, the 16, what, what we call digits of the moon are calculated, you know, the, you know one of the, uh, of the half of the solars of the lunar cycle, I mean, count and one, for example, the full moon is count by two. So that is the reason why we count 16, 16 uh, what we call digits. So from the new moon to the full moon, and we count the full moon by two. That is the reason also why there are certain mantras that have 16 digits. So that are in the iconography of the Kala Chakra and even in the Vedic Tantric uh, system, uh, those, those representations of uh, the, uh, the uh, female deities that are connected with the moon are uh, as young ladies of 16 years of age. Now, the other thing is that the new moon and the full moon and the eclipses are important. Now, let's talk about Rahu and Ketu. Now, one of the things that uh, a lot of people bring is about the eclipses, why the eclipses are so important in the, uh, uh, in the in the in the practice, for example, we have been taught that if during the time of an eclipse, an eclipse, if we do our practice, it is it is multiplied, is multiplied. Now, what is an eclipse inside of our body? Now, first of all, the central channel, avaduti, the central channel, is is related with fire. The central channel is related with fire in our physical body. The central channel is connected with the with with the uh, with the uh, with the central nerve system. You know that that runs through the uh, the spinal column, the spinal column. Now, so the thing is this: from the uh, the um, the emanation padma and the emanation lotus uh, in the solar plexus down, we call that rahu. We call that rahu or the dragon's head, or the dragon's head. We should know that from the astronomical point of view, the, the Rahu and Ketu are the points of intersection between the orbit of the moon and the orbit of the earth. And that have a retrograde motion of three minutes of arc a day. So that means that in 18 months, that point cross one zodiacal sign, but it have 18 years. The cycle is of 18 years around the zodiac. Now, that is astronomically speaking. In Vedic astrology, the north node or Rahu and the south node Ketu is related to our karma. So for a Vedic astrology, it's important to study the two nodes because the head represents the desire that brought us to this lifetime. Rahu is Maya, is the illusion. But Ketu, that is the opposite point or the dragon's tail, is the moksha karaka, is the one that will free us from samsara. Okay. Now, in our body, as I said before, in our subtle body, the central channel are the two nodes. From the uh, ple solar plexus, or the Padma in the solar plexus down to the, uh, the uh, secret chakra or, or the, uh, or the uh, secret center is called Rahu because that is the residence of our sense of evil is Ahamkara. Ahamkara is what is holding us in this lifetime. But from the, uh, 
the Padma, the uh, solar plexus, up to the center in the head. That is called Ketu. So whenever the energies, whenever the energies enter or whenever that central channel is active, there is a, an eclipse inside of us. For example, it is said that every certain time, you know, in certain times, the energy flow, we, this energy flow from the left channel to the right channel. Uh, for example, some, some theories said that every two hours, it changed from the lunar to the solar, from the lunar to the solar, okay? But from, in the process of transit from the lunar to the solar, then during that time in which we feel that the flow of air from our nostrils are the same, then the center channel is active. During that time, the important thing is that not samsaric activity should be done, only spiritual activities. Again, it's important to know that during the time in which the flow of, of air from your two nostrils are equalized, are the same, then that means the avidity is active. And during that time, that no samsaric activity should be done, only a spiritual practice. That is the reason why astro when the, uh, the astronomer astronomical eclipses is happening, is the best time to practice. But when the inner eclipses is, is happening, then that is the best time to do the practice. Now, now the thing is, and we know through the uh, uh, to the, uh, the in, to the inner yogas and the uh, the six yogas that, and we 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 know from all the practice of yoga, even the Vedic and the or the Buddhist, that the goal is to is to force energies to come into the central channel. Okay, so th those. 10 energies that we have that we study in the Kata Chakra system, the same in the, in the Vedic system, we know that the, 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 uh, the goal is to put those energy or to, or to, to force those energy to come into the central channel. Now, once those energies are forced, then the, a whole process of transformation happens. Then by rising those energy through the central channel on the melting of the white seeds and the red seeds, etc. Then, and by the igniting of the Buddha Agni or the Tumo, then, then we're able to transform and to make the energy to activate Ketu. And Ketu will liberate us from samsara because it will stop immediately the conceptual mind and then we'll be able to transform our whole body that is the the main goal in the Kala Chakra practice. Thank you. <clears throat> and just for clarification purposes, uh, I get a lot of questions about uh, Ketu and Kalagni. Is that the same thing? Um, can you explain a little bit about that? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Ketu and Kalagni is, are the same thing. Ketu and Kalagni are, are the same thing. The thing is that the translation of Kalagni <clears throat> Kala is time, Agni is fire. So Kalagni is the transformation fire. So Ketu becomes Kalagni when it's purified. Okay, now this is important, Tanya, because there is there is a concept that Kalagni is the earth, is the I mean is the energy that changed the era. Okay, that whenever we have to we we are transiting from the uh, the generated era to the golden age then kalagani mm -hmm. manifest then kalagani manifest and create the process of transformation the same thing happened in us so when whenever that the thing happened through the transformation of fire then we are we live we left it behind or our old self and then we, we in, in inner in our inner self, we we uh, you awaken our most sacred nature. So that is the that is the that is the purpose of Kalagani. Now let me tell you a secret. According to certain schools, Kalagani are the cosmic rays. 
Okay, you know that as astronomy have found, uh, you know, in the, the 50s that we are bombarded by certain type of energy that come from centers of the galaxies. Those are called cosmic rays. So according to certain school, we are transformed by that energy that are, we call in the astronomy, the cosmic rays. The same thing that happened to our planet happened inside of us. Remember the Kala Chakra, the Kala Chakra principle that whatever is outside is inside. Okay. So, um, you know, moving to um, what that means on a, a larger scale. So we've talked about how that means, what that means and on an individual level with the eclipses and Rahu and Ketu. What does that mean for, uh, you know, uh, countries or the earth experiencing that Rahu and Ketu axis as well? What, what does that do uh, for us or, you know, in, in the world? Okay. Okay. First of all, uh, we can use... Uh, the concept of Rahu and the cycles of Rahu and Ketu, the cycles of the nodes, to see in which place in the earth is the energy of transformation is, is making its work, okay? So, for example, when we, when we study mundane astrology, it's important to see where the nodes are placed, for example. There are certain, there are certain uh, instruments that we use in mundane astrology. For those who do not, are not familiar with the concept of mundane astrology, is, is, the, is, is the specialty of astrology that deals with the events that happen in our planet, you know, in the, from the political point of view, economical point of view, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the thing is this. So as Rahu moved around the signs 18 years, uh, uh, 18, 18 months, in, in each sign, then it creates a transformation in the, in the countries that are touched by those, by that, by that axis. For example, the, the, uh, the, the countries that are represented by the signs that are being influenced by Rahu are the ones in which the term, you will see more turmoil, okay? You will see more turmoil. You will see more confusion. Uh, you know, Rahu is, is related with terrorism, for example, is, create, is related with terrorism. Now, but then Ketu, Ketu, that is the opposite point. Whenever it's passing through a country, is creating a process of transformation, okay? A process of transformation. Sometimes those transformation, and this is very important, come after natural disaster because Ketu is related with that kind of thing. And this is important because there's a lot of, of events in the earth that after they, they pass, after, after people experience them, then they raise their consciousness to another level. For example, we in the Caribbean that we experience hurricanes so often, and for example, now people in Central America, they're experiencing, for example, volcanoes, et cetera, then usually those create, those natural disaster create impact in the people. Remember, again, the Kala Chakra principle, but it's outside, it's inside as well. And when the, the forces of the earth are, are, for example, in some way of another, they're raised, you know, automatically they create the same effect inside of us. So now, so those forces of transformation that we call Ketu or Kalagani, they are working. Now, but the important thing, Tanya, is that we have to be receptible for that. You know, one of the principles is that when when the uh, when the humankind is not accepting that process of transformation, now they are translated into 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 this kind of of natural disasters, etc. So that is the that that is the thing why, and this is the reason why Kala Chakra have make us so uh, so conscious of those forces that work outside of us. And I will repeat, whenever this Kalagani is working and we are influenced by this force, then if humanity do not receive that uh, process of transformation, then usually those forces of transformation are, are, are manifest in nature as natural disasters or imbalances in the, in the elements, Etc. Etc. So that's the way 
in which those process of transformation comes to be in in nature as well. As well. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and just briefly, I guess sticking on that same subject, can you talk a little bit about something that everybody knows in the last you know um, eighteen months, two years about coronavirus in the world and how that is as manifested? Well, just just uh, uh, it's, it's important that uh, certain statistical uh, studies have been done within the uh, astrological community that they create a, a, a relationship between the nodes and viruses, mm -hmm. okay? So for example, it's interesting that when the coronavirus started or man start manifesting, uh, apparently it was at some point in the late uh, uh, 2019, then the North Node was in Gemini and Gemini rules the respiratory system, but as well the nervous system, okay? So during the 18 months that the Rahu was transiting through Gemini was the peak, you know, was the peak of the coronavirus, okay? Now that have received to the sign of Taurus, okay? So now Taurus is connected with the troth and the upper respiratory system. And that there's a lot of people that are having, for example, the loss, the loss of the sense of smell and taste is connected mm -hmm. with Gemini and Taurus as well. So the cycles of the nodes are related with viruses, okay? Mm -hmm. Are related with viruses. So, and there, 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 there was a, a, a prediction by some astrologers that after the month of, of, of September of last year, then everything, you know, the, uh, all the remedies and vaccines will be, will be discovered, et cetera, and will start being, you know, uh, the, uh, the people will start uh, getting vaccinated, et cetera. Because during that time, during that time, that was the peak and then the, re the receding aspects of the transit of the nodes. Now, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the North node and the South node, uh, they left the axis Gemini Sagittarius on November the 5th last year in the sidereal system, okay? So it's important that now the dragon's tail or the Ketu is in Scorpio, its own house. Now Rahu is in Taurus, is in its house of exaltation according to Parashara. So it's interesting because now, you know, some now we have the Delta variant and we have all the variants that are affecting other parts of the body, you know, are affecting other parts of the body. So that is the cycle. That is the cycle. Now, it's important as well, uh, uh, Tania, that now that Rahu is, is pointing to Taurus, is also creating a transformation in the financial system. Okay, in the financial system, because Taurus rule finances. So uh, this is important because now there, there is a, a movement in many, in many countries of the world, in the United States, there's a tendency again to go and to look at more socialist type of government and economy, models of an economy, in opposed to those uh, capitalist models of economy. And those cycles are also controlled by the slow moving planet, but at the same time, by the nodes, by the, by the, by the uh, nodes of the moon uh, in the same way. The Ketu in, the, in, the, in Scorpio is, is awakening the consciousness of a lot of people on astrology. So that is the reason because Scorpio and Ketu rules astrology. There's a lot of people now that wants to study astrology. Uh, is also connected with Tantra. So that is the reason why there's a lot of people now interested in Tantra studies. So that's, that is the way in which the, no, the notes work in their cycle, the 18 year cycles. Perfect, thank you so much. Uh, so uh, now that kind of brings us to, uh, you know, color chakra astrology and the golden age and the timing of the golden age. And, and what, is, what does that mean for us? And how does that manifest? Well, this is important for two reasons. This is important for two reasons. 
the thing with the golden age is purification of the teaching first. So one of the great, one of the great achievements of Kabir Dolpopa was to call the attention about the, about the uh, impurities and about the problems of interpretation of Lord Buddha's teaching. Okay, so it's important to know that all systems of astrology, listen to this, <laughs> are corrupt. Are uh, what? Corrupt. Okay. Okay. Yes. Now, <laughs> so, uh, so Pundarika, Pundarika in the stainless light said that all the Siddhantas are corrupt, that all the astronomical systems are corrupt. And the system were corrupt in three ways. First, through translation, because mm -hmm. when, when people start doing translation, people, some, some translators do not understood the concept or do not understand the concept. Remember, Tanya, that for example, works like Brihad Parashara Hora Shastra was composed and given to humanity during the Dwapara Yuga, when we were brighter, more intelligent than now, that we are in the, uh, in the uh, we are in the degenerate, the generated times, okay? Yes. So mm -hmm. we, the mind of the people that were taught on those eras were completely different. Now, during the process of translation, there have been a lot of mistakes. There's one, there's one uh, author, very traditional uh, author that is called Kopesh Kumar Oja that says that we had Parashara, Parashara Hora Shastra is so deformed, is so, polluted that you cannot recognize anymore what Parashara said. Mm. The same thing happened with the Siddhantas. I will give you one hint. <laughs> the days of the week have been, have been related with planets. Mm -hmm. The Sunday with the sun, the Monday with the moon, the Tuesday with Mangala, with Mars, etc. That is wrong. Okay. That is Christian astrology. Yes. That is not Vedic astrology. That is wrong. But, for example, we as astrologers, a teacher of astrology, we have to teach the same thing. But for my students, I teach the correct system. No, it's wrong. The, the Sunday is not ruled by the sun. The problem was the Christian wants to put the sun in the Sunday because the Christian religion is a solar cult, okay? So, but the true, the true ruler of the Sunday is Saturn. So the thing is that in the same way, there are other sins that had been corrupted. So philosophical, all religions have been messed up and there's a lot of contamination in the Christian religion, in the Islamic religion, et cetera, et cetera, post interpretation, et cetera, and in the Buddhist religion, in the Buddhist philosophy too. So one of the things that Kapiya Dol Popa did was to purify, to reinterpret the teachings according to the golden age. So the first thing, the first thing that the golden age will manifest is the purification by fire. Mm. Purification by fire. So that will make astrology purer and more, more accurate, but at the same time, all systems of philosophy and even the manifestation of religion in the same way. So that is the reason why now, Tanya, now, Tanya, there's a lot of new translations. There's the new people that are working on purifying, go back to the originals because they know that through the years, first, because of translation, second, intentionally. Mm -hmm. intentionally okay mm -hmm. intentionally so through the years people thought that their opinion and interpretation was better so they intentionally changed things yes yes so, based, on the, so, based on their own karma right 
Of course, of course, of yeah. course. So that is something that the first thing it would be the, the a purification of all the teachings, of all the teachings. But at the same time, you know, the other thing is the people are understanding that their, their own sacred nature is inside that they don't need that they don't need people as as intermediaries between them and the divine forces or the uh, true of the uh, ultimate nature of the ultimate truth because we are we are buddhas in our own nature so by doing that we are awakening to the consciousness that the only problem that we have and that we are not realized that inside of us is the dharmakaya is the dharma dhatu is the buddha dhatu inside of us so by by having creating that consciousness then we are freeing ourselves to all this change that the chains that have been that, that had been oppressed us through dogma, etc. Because we know now our true nature. Now, but that is the secret of the sun in astrology. That is the secret of the sun in astrology. So, as you know, as, as a student of astrology, that the sun is called the Atma Karaka. Mm -hmm. The Atma Karaka. So he is the one. Wow that represent the Atman, our true nature. Okay, so the sun is our inner light, is our inner light. So that is the reason why the sun is so important in astrology, but the moon also, because the moon is the mind, in the subtle body. So now, now as we, as we let our inner sun to shine, our inner sun to shine, then we will be able to break the change and the prison of our own zodiac. Tanya, we all are chained to the astrological houses. Yes. We all we are chained in the uh, in the to the astrological houses. The next step, when we get free from the astrological houses, then we are working in the astrological signs. But then when we break out of that through the control of the subtle body, then we become one planet. So there are seven planets or five planets, according to Chinese astrology, for example, that correspond to the five Dani Buddhas or six Dani Buddhas, according to college tradition. So by working into this new consciousness that was brought by Kapiadol Popa, and the teachings of Maitreya, and the, and the teachings, for example, of Arya Sangha, and the five treatises of Maitreya, for example, that have, 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 have unveiled our true nature, then that is, that is the purpose. And we can find that to astrology as well. Perfect. Thank you so much. I think this is a wonderful place to conclude, uh, unless you have any concluding thoughts before we take some questions. Well, I think that uh, uh, I, I invite uh, all the students uh, to, you know, to explore astrology. Uh, it had been uh, very sad that for many years, uh, astrology had been used so wrongly. Astrology is a sadhana, it's a spiritual practice. And one of the things that I have, I have transferred to you and I have taught you and I have taught to other students is that astrology is not, if you use astrology only as a divination tool, you know, you are, you are, you know, you are letting aside the most important thing. I said it before, this is a sign of theurgy. We are dealing with gods Mm -hmm. We're dealing with higher intelligence. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why to become an astrologer, you have to have an, a very strong spiritual practice because you're a vehicle of those forces. Okay? So, so I invite all of you 
to explore astrology from a more spiritual point of view, from a more spiritual approach. That is, that is the thing. And to, and to know and to become more familiar with, with the signs that for many years have guided people in the spiritual path as a tool. Remember something. In Vedic astrology and in the Vedic tradition, we said that astrology are the eyes of the Vedas. We are blind by our ignorance. And Parashara says in the Brihad Parashara Hora Shastra that if you don't if you don't know astrology and you if you don't use astrology, then you will be going around the cycle of rebirth once and once and once again because you are blind. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank you so okay. much. Uh, if anyone has any questions that they would like to ask Jose, um, now is your opportunity. Uh, so please uh, put those in the Q&A section. Uh, I have seen a couple already, uh, Jose, if you are ready for a couple of questions. Of course, of course, of course. Okay. Uh, what, 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 what person, I want to address this first one uh, about, the days, <laughs> about the days of the week, about sure. the days of the week. So for you to have uh, the knowledge, Sunday is ruled by, by Saturn, okay? Monday is, is the only one that coincides, is ruled by the moon. Tuesday is ruled by Mercury or Buddha, okay? So that's Wednesday, uh, I mean, that's Tuesday. Wednesday is ruled by Venus. Thursday is ruled by the sun. Friday is ruled by Mars. Saturday is ruled by Jupiter. And Sunday is ruled again by Saturn. Those are the correct correlations. The other one are Christian. Mm -hmm. they, they, they changed that in that way because of that. But another thing, let me tell you something. Because of the prejudice of the, Bra of the Brahmins and the enmity between the Brahmins and the Buddhists, they have belittled Buddha and they have created a lot of things created and related with Mercury that we call in Sanskrit Buddha. Okay, so that is the reason, that is the reason why they say that Mercury rules the element Earth. And that is an impossibility. Okay. Because Mercury is a planet of motion and movement and change. So the Earth is solid. So it's ruled more by by Saturn, that by Mercury, but that is a way to belittle and degrade Buddha. Mm. That is one of the factors of contamination and pollution, mm. religious religious animosity. Mm -hmm. Okay, next question. Okay, uh, can you explain uh, perhaps uh, the relationship between quantum physics and color chakra? <laughs> okay. The thing is this, we have learned uh, through Kabir Dorpopa that if we interpret the Kala Chakra system using the great Madhyamika, okay, by using the teachings of Maitreya, then there's a perfect correlation between quantum physics and Kala Chakra and the teachings of Maitreya. Why? The key is, if you, for example, read the Madhyanta Vibhanga, for example, that is the uh, middle between the extremes, or if you read, for example, two, two sutras that are important, Lankavatara Sutra and the Sandinir Mochana Sutra, then everything is a projection of the mind. Everything is a projection of the mind. So in the uh, 
in the great Madhyamika system, there are three realities. So there's an absolute reality, there's a causal reality, and there's the imaginative reality. You are projecting the reality. So by, by interpreting Kali Chakra system through the eyes of the great Madhyamika, that was the great exposition of Kavya Dolpopa by, by studying, for example, the teachings of Dolpopa in relation, for example, the mountain, the mountain doctrines, for example. If you study the mountain doctrine, you will see how he explained all these uh, Maitreya teachings uh, and all the tantras on, 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 the, on the view of this, of this uh, of the great Madhyamika. And then we will see that there's an ultimate reality. There is the quantum field. There is an mm -hmm. ultimate reality from which, from what, from, from, uh, what uh, everything have, have manifest in the universe and will be back in the universe. And that everything that is created, everything that we experience, there is, uh, is created by our imagination, the, project, the projection of our vasanas. Our vasanas are our karmic seeds. Now, some of the things that is important uh, in the, uh, in, there's a work by, there's a work by Arya Sangha uh, that is called, uh, that is, that is called Mahayana Samgraha, in which he explained why, why there, we, uh, uh, you know, the uh, sentient beings are still projecting a reality. The, the, the way, the, the reason why uh, uh, sentient beings are projecting a reality is that with the, is, is because the universe had to be, had to continue in order to provide, to provide the sentient beings a way a way and a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a place for, uh, to, to manifest their karma, to experience their karma. So there's one collective imagination as, as far as Arya Sangha explained in, the, in that, in that uh, Mahayana Sangraha, and there's a personal imagination. We are participating on a collective imagination that, that gives us the, the reality that we all observe and experience. But at the same time, there's a, a, a personal uh, experience that we are projecting based on our karma. The difference between a bodhisattva of the eighth and ninth level of Bhumi and us, he have no, no projection because he have burned out all the vasanas or the karmic seeds that are in the alaya vinyana, in the subtle unconscious mind. Okay, thank you. Uh, when a person takes the uh, initiation or the color chakra initiation, um, what effect does that have, if any, on the internal, our internal astrology? Well, first, people don't have um, a comprehensive understanding about the importance of an empowerment or an initiation, abhicheka as we called it in Sanskrit. The thing is that, remember that the, the, the Lama, the Tantric Lama, our Lama, the Vajra master, have prepared himself through a rigorous practice and many of the, uh, of the, uh, of the, of the uh, Vajra masters go to retreat before they start or they give a, uh, uh, an abhicheka, an empowerment. So they are impregnated with the mantras, okay? So when you come into an empowerment given by a true Bachara master, then you will not only receive certain information that is given during the process of their empowerment, but the Bachara master will plant inside of you a karmic seed that will start working inside of your unconscious, but at the same time will link you with him for future life. But at the same time, the Bachelor Master, through his own realization and through the power of his Samboga Kaya, will give you, will transmit you with his own realization. So by being in front of a true Bajra master, not only you will receive the uh, symbols 
or this all the symbolic aspect of the initiation, you will receive the seeds that will connect uh, you with him for, for many incarnations until you attain Buddhahood. But at the same time, you will be able to participate of his own realizations. And that is the importance. And that is not only because of the preliminary practice done by the Bachara Master, it's because of the uh, lineage, of the blessings of the lineage. If a master doesn't have an authentic lineage, then he cannot transmit the whole power of the initiation. That, that is the reason why it's so important, so important to, uh, to be sure that you are in front of a holder of a tradition, of a holder of the true tradition. Thank you. Um, okay. So this is about um, uh, I guess uh, this is about um, our, uh, the Aquarian age. So um, I've heard that we're coming out of the Aquarian age and moving into the Piscean age. What does this mean for the guru effect? Okay. Uh, meaning I've heard that the guru is going away. So just um, she's wanting uh, for you to share your thoughts on that. Again, again, uh, let me let me understand uh, the concept that we are that if in the uh, in the next age we we are not going to have gurus. You mean? So um, yeah, what does it mean for the guru effect? Meaning that she has heard that the guru is going to go away from when we move from the Aquarian age to the Piscean age. No, it's and the contrary. Thought... You know, remember that the zodiacal age are moving backward. Mm -hmm. So we, we just left Pi the Pisces age to the Aquarian age. It's moving backward. Yep. It's, the con it's, it's the contrary. Uh, the thing is this. They're, they're in the same way that in the Vedic astrology, there, there are different theories about, uh, about what is called the Ayanamsha, the, uh, when, well, the point that is now, uh, where is the, uh, the point of intersection between the uh, ecliptic and the uh, uh, and the uh, and the equator of the celestial sphere sphere. Uh, now the concept of Aquarian age is not based on that only. There are other equations that are used to calculate the starting of an era. The uh, the Aquarian age started around the uh, the nine hundred about uh, about the nine hundred. So. Uh, so now we are in the Aquarian age. So that is the reason why everything has started. Everything has awakened, you know, Aquarius. And, and there is something Alan Leo says, and you quote, uh, you, when you read my biography, uh, you read about my relationship with Alan Leo through my first master, Armando von de la Jara. Mm -hmm. uh, Alan Leo says that even people that are Aquarian, if they don't, if they don't purify their minds, they won't be able to, to receive the true energies of Aquari of, of the sign of Aquarius or the Aquarian age. So the more you purify your mind, the more you will vibrate, the more you will resonate with the uh, with the forces of the Aquarian age. Of course, the problem, the concept of, uh, of Aquarius is that in the lower phase. In the lower manifestation of Aquarius, uh, then people are more uh, rebel. You know, the people are more are more uh, uh, they they resist more the, uh, for example, the uh, the authority of or, of a guru or something like that. But that is the low level. This is something important, Tanya. You as a, a student of astrology. They're not such a thing as malefic planets or malefic signs. That's depend on the level of evolution of the person. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a person that has purified his own mind, then there, there, there is no malefic planets. Okay, the problem is that if a planet affects you because it's activate your samskaras or your vasanas, then, because you have that vasanas inside, you have not purified that vasanas, 
those get activated and then you can you can react in that way so that you know going back to the question so it's not that during this age we're going to get rid of the gurus but the contrary you know by the contrary the the enlightened minds of the people that will be will will be coming uh to uh, and will be will be born the babies that are born in this era are more awake and my personal experience traveling around is just a country you know all these kids all the youngsters that i have met you know in, the, in for example here in puerto rico here in other places they're thirsty of knowledge they're they're searching for gurus they're searching for people that can guide them mm -hmm. in a certain way because they feel that they have all this all this knowledge inside or 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 those uh impulses spiritual impulses inside and they need guidance mm. the problem is that because we we'll still are going out of the uh, the generated era there's a lot of false gurus that are misleading all those people in the and they are using them economically and they're exploiting them economically and they're guiding them in another in in other path but but no, no, it's not that we're going to get rid. Remember that the zodiacal eras move in retrogression from uh, Capricorn to, I mean, from uh, from Pisces to Aquarius and from Aquarius to Capricorn then. But now, now they will be, we are entering, we are entering the Aquarian age because it's not only the point in which the intersection is placed, there are other equations that it used to uh, calculate the beginning of a zodiacal age or an, an or, or a nation in general. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so you spoke about um, you know obviously uh, we're we're um, only influenced by the the planetary um, energies when when we're when we're within the karmic realm, right? So again, once... again, 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 can, can, you, can you start again? Again, you start again. Okay. Um, so you talked about um, only being influenced by malefic planets uh, when you're within the, you know, uh, the karmic sphere, right? Uh, so um, what does that mean if somebody has, um, you know, a, a, I guess a higher level of um, spiritual realization? What, what does this whole system mean for them? And what does that mean for the larger population too? Okay. Kampopa, the uh, main disciple of Milarepa says mm. that karma is experienced in the skandhas, okay? In the skandhas, okay? So in the aggregates, okay? Now, that is the reason why, dear, we have in Vedic astrology 16, division chart division or divisional charts so that each of them will try will help us to understand our the how the different aggregates works now the thing is this the main population at this time is based in their astrological houses okay so they 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 don't have because because they are they're they're under the spell of ignorance because they're they're under the spell of the three poisons that we learn in buddhist teaching in the buddhist teaching you know, they are trapped in the 12 houses of the zodiac so that is the reason why dear is so easy to do uh to do predictions to people because usually they follow the karmic path Okay, so when you try to lead a person out of that path, of course, they need a lot of, of will and they need a lot of discipline to, in order to break down your habitual patterns. Okay, so the thing is that the, the mean population of steel on this, on this level, we are on this level, You're, we're in the level of the astrological houses and, and experiences the karma this the Pradapta karma for this life, okay, for this life. Now, but there is a group of people that are interested in the spiritual path. 
that are trying to, they're first of all, to clean their mind, to purify their mind, okay? In order to be able to enter into higher levels of the spiritual practice. As people start, uh, when people start doing purification, for example, that is the importance of the Bachara Sattva practice. Because when you do the Bachara Sattva practice, you're burning your vasanas. So that is the reason why when Rinpoche came here to Puerto Rico for the first time in the retreat that he gave after the empowerment, one of our students of the members of the Sangha asked him uh, how the, the, the karma, the bad karma will manifest uh, when you start practicing the Kalachak path. And he said, first, the, uh, the good karma will manifest first. And the bad karma will manifest in a lesser way, in a lesser way. Because the more you work, purifying your, your, your mind through the, uh, the, uh, the practice of mantra and to watching your mind and to be aware of your thoughts, and to be aware of the uh, of the ten of the ten, of the path of the uh, of the uh, negative karma of the uh, the ten negative karma the trees of the body the fourth of the of the word of the speech and and the other trees of the mind then you start doing and living a, a more a cleaner life a more a more pure life and that will make you to be more susceptible and receptive to the higher levels and energy of the planets, of course. So mm -hmm. that is the reason, but the, the, the population by itself, you know, if you study, uh, if you take the population as a whole, we are in the process of awakening. And remember that what, what, what is more, what, 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 what evolved more slowly is consciousness. Is the, is the mind, of course, not the spiritual consciousness, but it's the mind. So that is the reason why we are little by little. And as the uh, Aquarian age uh, moves forward and as the, uh, the golden age moves forward, then we will see a more, a more awakening in the, in the people. One of the, I, I use, I use one, one phrase, and I repeat that phrase many times in, for example, in my writings, the sun is rising. Thank you. Uh, I think we'll take one more question today. Uh, there are quite a few questions about how people can study uh, astrology and, and color chakra, take color chakra initiations further. We will provide um, some further um, resources for you about that. Uh, but uh, to finish off with the last question, Jose, um, so in the year of the golden dog in the Tibetan calendar around 2030, uh, many spiritual realms have predicted the world will undergo great changes, which is similar to a kind of washing, including, yeah, so um, do you have, uh, have you got knowledge of any, um, anything about that time? Well, it's interesting, uh, Tanya, that uh, there's a lot of things that have been planned by the United Nations and, and other uh, world organizations that coincide with that day. For example, mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the last uh, meetings for the, uh, the, uh, for, to take the environmental measurements, they put goals for 2030. And there's mm -hmm. a lot of things that are coinciding for 2030. The secret of the 2030 is number five. Is number five, it's the five point star, okay? So a lot of these dates uh, can be interpreted from the point of view of numerology, okay? Number five if, is, the, is the number of Lord Shiva, but number five, is the number for Buddha, okay? So remember five is Mercury, mm -hmm. okay? So that means in a certain way, it can mean in a certain way 
there will be some kind of awakening during that time. But remember something. I have I have battled and struggled and fight with with uh, this kinds of prophecy because there is not such a thing as a collective awakening. No, it it's it's an individual journey. Mm -hmm. It's an individual journey. I remember Tanya in in 2012 when all those Maya things came. And yes. people were we were people were talking about that we will be awake in another dimension, etc. <laughs> I I I did I I toured around the United States and other countries just to just to battle, you know, to battle with that theory. Because because that was something that came out of the mind of one author that that died, already died. Uh, his name was Jose Arguelles, and Jose Arguelles came with the theory that it, uh, 2012 will be uh, the uh, the uh, beginning of the sixth son and the, uh, a whole change. And of course, another one, uh, uh, other people start talking about the destruction of the earth. And you remember the movie, uh, and uh, and they had to 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 deal with youngsters and teenagers that were in a crisis because they thought that the world would end. In 2012, and so I start as I said, I, I, I did a tour through the United States, uh, talking about the 2012, and 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 just breaking down all those uh, all those things. Uh, interestingly, at the same time, the Mayan community sent two uh, astronomer, two astronomer, two astronomer priests. Mm -hmm. to lecture around the world to say exactly the same thing that I was saying, that everything was an exaggeration, that they never said that. Even one of, one of, one of these uh, uh, priests, uh, that he's an astronomer, Don Alejandro, said that how Jose Arguelles gave with the theory when he doesn't speak Mayan. <laughs> so the thing is that after I, I, throw away all the things. I have the honor that in my last lecture or workshop, I had the representative of the Mayan community just to, just to say the same thing that I was saying, that there will not be this kind of collective awakening, things like that. No, everything will be individual in an individual way. And one of the great problems with the, this new age uh, thing and these new age groups is that every time they open, they talks about the opening of portals and the opening of things and the uh, coming to the earth of this and that, and they, uh, they, they mix the whole thing with the UFO phenomena or the angels and things, and nothing happened. <laughs> and the same thing happened with all those catastrophes that there are going to be this uh, planet that will that will clash with the Earth and thing, nothing happened. Mm. And and I have in TV many times have I have challenged people, yeah. For example, uh, because things are not like that. You know, we will be awakening little by little, and the new age will be coming because of an awakening. And Rinpoche says something very important: the more we involve people. In this, in the in this suction movement, the the more we involve people in the these concepts that are being that are being presented by the by the Jonan masters and the Kala Chakra masters, and we make people to to start practicing the Kala Chakra. That's the reason why a lot of the Tibetan masters are doing collective initiation in Kala Chakra, is because the more individuals start awakening then the adding up of the consciousness of all these people will create the new era. So that's the thing. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much, dear Jose. Um, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. And um, yeah, thank, just thank you for spending the time with us all today and uh, imparting your knowledge. So. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry about the Chinese, our Chinese brothers that they had apparently some problem with the translation of, but of course, it's going to be 
the uh, the uh, recording will be there, so that if they want to make a transcript for them, uh, but I I thank them also for yeah. try to be here with us. So, yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, translator. It has been a pleasure and an, and an honor. And thank you, Paulette. Gracias, Paulette, for the effort. So she was so scared, <laughs> and she wrote me <laughs> this morning. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to pass the test to translate you. So, <laughs> so you see, it was easy. <laughs> Gracias, uh, Paulette. Thank you, Paulette. And thank you, Tanya. Thank you, thank Vanessa. Thank you so much, Jose.